Okay, click here. <laughs> click that right there. She got it. Okay, we live. You live, guys? <laughs> Woohoo! Happy Saturday night. I don't supposed to be here, guys, but here I am. <laughs> so just supposed to be here. Yeah. Welcome everybody. Hello. Happy Saturday night. Yeah. Welcome everybody. Nice to see you again, dude. Hello. How are you all feeling? My goodness, we've been hit by. Hi, Cici. That's Cici. Hello. Oh man. Gosh, we've been hit big time by energies here, and the whole team is just. Do you see my hair? <laughs> it's the amount of energy that is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you are the sun. <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been seriously hit by a lot of energies, a lot of strong energies. Uh, um, some of them, some some of us have had like extreme nausea, extreme tiredness. Um, this one here has not been able to keep her eyes open. It's just been like really, really intense. How are you guys feeling? Can you hear me? Uh, super tired. Like I, I worked Tuesday and then Wednesday came and I was doing my one client's hair and she's like, are you okay? She's like, you, you just don't, she's like, even your movements seem really slow. You don't really seem like yourself. And I'm like, you know what? I'm tired. Like, I feel like yeah. I could just sit down and go to sleep for three days. Like there was no energy. It was very sluggish. Um, I know a lot of people said that their bowels were moving quickly, but mine weren't like mm -hmm. moving at all. Mine, like mine didn't want to move at all. And it just, it just was so heavy. And when mm -hmm. I slept, I slept hard, but then I didn't want to get up in the morning, but you couldn't catch up on the sleep. And, but the last mm -hmm. two days, they've been like physically busy, but they haven't felt as sluggish as they did at the beginning of the week. Wow. Yeah. That was my Tuesday. I was just, it was all I could do to stay awake. Mm. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> it, but it was, you know, we only had a couple days with all four of us here before my daughter went back to college. So wanted mm. to make the most of it. Um, Tuesday was tough. Um, but, uh, <laughs> we had no choice. We had to pack and drive to college. So <laughs> yeah. yeah that's when we um that's that's where we i mean we need to push through you know um it's it's really hard it's hitting hitting us hitting everybody mm -hmm. i mean these energies that are coming uh and they're coming in waves yes and every time that they come they come stronger mm -hmm. and because the um the earth magnetic field is weakening Mm -hmm. I mean, the impact is, is getting stronger. Yeah. And nobody is exempt of. I, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we came here this morning. Mm -hmm. We arrived this morning, um, quarter to six. No, quarter, yeah, quarter to six. Mm -hmm. We've been driving for days. I mean, literally. Yeah. That's the only thing that we have done. Yeah. Driving for days. Uh, and uh, um, so when we came here, I saw the bear, the big, big, um, German Shepherd. German mm -hmm. Shepherd. We mm -hmm. had a beautiful dog. And I saw him and like, uh, what, what happened with you? I mean, to me, he looked, he looked like he aged like uh, five really? years. Wow. And like, uh, wow, what is what is going on? So it's, it's really hitting everybody. Yes. It's hitting everybody. And it's, um, it, it depends, depends what you need to work with or work on is what is hitting you the most. Mm, yeah. uh, uh for Linda and myself the, the last couple of days it was mm. I mean we were sweating and then we were freezing cold mm -hmm. five minutes later and then we just I mean every time that we breathe we want to puke the diarrhea present the whole time I mean it was I mean I'm not talking about one hour I'm talking the whole day and driving uh the back the back is so painful right now yeah and yes. the back, everybody's the going to back, have another yeah. the, the whole yeah. thing the yeah. whole thing but it's uh sometimes it is it is more emphasizing the lower back and the whole back really really 
Really? And over the last few days, does anybody feel like anxious or anxiety? Oh, yes. All? Yeah, yes, definitely. Uh, anxious, anxiety, like, like I got to do something <laughs> around or something. Right. And that anxiety, you know, uh, you know, uh, really easily to get triggered, you know, open, a, open, a, open the computer up. Like, and then and I was and I was recognizing that yesterday. <laughs> getting triggered like i'm not even you know looking at anything <laughs> you know no I'm not looking at nothing and i'm just getting triggered and i'm really uh, observing it that was that was today I was like like why like why am i why is it making me feel something like what's going on here you know and so uh, as you, oh sorry keep going gp sorry no uh yeah and that, that, that's what i wanted to uh, share too uh yeah, and it's yeah, tiredness. Oh, gee, was you know, I want to get you know, I, I'm in that space where I want to sleep all day, but then at the same time, I want to stay up all night. And I do we get tired. Yeah, we are in that space that you just crossing the freeway and here comes the Mack truck. Too. <laughs> and then until okay, I get up, okay, somebody got the license plate, and as soon as you get up, it comes another one, you know, so you are again, okay. Okay, you're looking at this one. Boom! Come from the other side. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just the the frequency. Yeah, yeah. It's the one frequency after frequency. another. It's mm -hmm. like like Linda said, it's coming in layers. Yeah. Not yeah. Not well, stuff. when you were just saying about coming in of things to um, let go of, and then when Lisa talked about anxiety, I'm like, no, I didn't have anxiety. I'm like, but the clutter of my house that I haven't been able to clean bothers me when I look at it and then I'm like oh aha boom the clutter the old the stuff you need to get out mm -hmm. and let go of so right there just on right. right now just showed like that anxiety of it's there there's that old to clear out and get rid of and organize and let go of that shit so there was a message for me right in the moment again so thank you for all that <laughs> Yeah, I've yeah. never done so much breathing uh, yeah. when I felt anxious and I kept like, let it go, let it go, let it pass yeah. through me. Um, it worked for me, um, but it, it was many times throughout the day. And that was on Friday on my way home. So Tuesday and Friday, I think Wednesday and Thursday, we just had to rally. <laughs> But it was amazing because I asked spirit for help um, because I do struggle with my knees and, and pain in them. I know that has to do with flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. But I had this expectation that everything was going to be great because she lived in a walk up apartment and it was just my daughter and I. So we had to carry the bed, everything up. Um, oh and yeah, oh and literally... I had zero pain. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Wow, that's amazing. I'm like, my knees feel great, totally flexible. And we had, it took us 10 hours to get there. And so it was like 6 30, 7 o'clock at night, and we were unloading. I'm like, let's get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, can you come and help us to move? Yeah. <laughs> or still unpack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then I came home to the 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 house uh, from the two boys. <laughs> Although I can't say anything, I cooked tonight, and my husband was the cook, and I've left a trail of disaster everywhere. So. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> it's okay. He's just going to be so happy I cooked. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. And you know, um, the other thing too with these energies that are coming up is it's bringing up a lot of um, um, fear and um, density from within yeah. too. Yes. So it's, it's like you said, Lisa, it's, it's really important that we connect to our breath and keep coming back to our heart so we don't get caught up in our minds over it. Right. You know, because there's a, a few times I remember having these really interesting sensations in my body and nothing that I've experienced before. And so I had to like kind of constantly say, it's okay, 
just let him flow through, just let him flow through, you know. And it you really know. makes a difference talking to you yourself out loud. It just, mm-hmm. I can't even tell you how important it is, truly. It does. Yeah. Then, you know, I've had to remind myself, I'm not dying. I'm not dying. Yes, my head may be pounding. I may be in excruciating pain, but I'm not dying. No, no. You know, because you get that fear that comes up because you have not experienced such intensity. Well, I, for me personally, I had not experienced such intensity with these energies. And I was like, and uh, when I was talking to Vicki and when she came in to check in on me and she said, I just had that look in my eyes and I held on to her really tight. And she asked me, you know, what was I afraid of? And it did, nothing really connected with me at the time. But then it came to me later. It was like, oh, yeah. Um, when my daughter had an aneurysm because I was feeling the pain right here. And that's where she had an aneurysm. And it was just like, oh, that was what it was. And so. It was like I just had to talk myself through it. Like I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm not dying. Everything's gonna be okay. It's just the energy's free mm-hmm. through it. Mm-hmm. You know, and oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, twice. <laughs> they're they're rough. It was it was very very painful. Um, today is pretty much I've been on my feet quite a bit since going through all that. But even today, still, mm. um, I've been throwing up. You know. A couple, uh, three four times this morning and and the other and I mean it's it's a, it's a battle to keep going and staying hydrated I mean I can't tell you enough how long mm. it is to stay hydrated yes yeah hydrated, yes hydrated. actually um because one thing I've noticed absolutely um is for me was that I I've had this internal fire mm-hmm. and it's almost like nothing can satiate yes <laughs> Nothing can satiate you first, right? right. The mouth is always yes. dry. Yes. Yeah, it must be really dry, yeah. So yeah, it's really important to hydrate for sure. Mm-hmm. Actually, the um during this um few couple three days, three or four days that we went driving, we haven't eaten anything. Right. We can't oh, yeah. we, we yeah. couldn't. Mm-hmm. We couldn't. I mean it was just too much. So yeah. just water, water and water. Water, water. Yeah, um, that's the only thing that it did goes. Did you guys I, notice though that I lost my appetite days before that? Mm-hmm. Did you? Yeah, we were hungry for like four days before it all hit. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah, I had a day like that too last week where it was like I just can't eat, and it wasn't. But I didn't. I didn't feel sick. There was just no hunger there at all. There was just no but desire, no need, no anything to eat. Mm. And when you taste it, it tastes weird. Yes. Mm-hmm. For me, it tastes uh, uh, meta. Metal. Mm-hmm. Meta. Yeah. Yeah. Even the water. Even the water. Yes, I was going to say. Even the water. Even the water. Like, uh, actually, I noticed that today, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It feels like it dries out your mouth mm-hmm. instead of hydrating. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I tried putting one of those liquid IVs in my water. <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> it didn't work. The flavor of it was like, nope. I drink it. It was like, okay, I'd rather have the plain water that tastes like metal than the strawberry stuff tasting like metal. It was, yeah. Do you guys use um, uh, electrolytes? Yeah, that's what the liquid IV. I don't like, I don't like that either. I usually just use lemon water, squeeze some lemon in my water. I do love that. And that, that makes a big difference for me, especially in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, orange juice and uh, lemon. Oh. But I usually yeah, dilute it with a whole bunch of water. Mm-hmm. So, so, so. <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> and which brings us to our topic tonight. So our human is built upon built upon opinions, assumptions, and expectations. How we value ourselves and value others is created from opinions, assumptions, and expectations. Therefore, everything we believe about ourselves is a lie. So that's a really big one. It is. It is a big one. Uh, Because our whole life has been built to is that world part of me we're to appease everyone else 
What were you going to say, Jumpo? No, it seemed like you're cutting out, unless that yeah. was me. No, she was breaking up. Okay. Mm. Could you just please repeat that, please? You, you're breaking up. The whole thing? No, oh, just about based on uh, our, our whole uh, being based on a lie. It, it, we started to break out there. Oh, okay. So I'll just read the last part again. So how we value ourselves and value others is created from opinions, assumptions, and expectations. Therefore, everything we believe and know about ourselves is based on a lie. Mm. That's def definitely uh, a tough one. You recognize a human is built upon opinions. I mean, let's start there, for instance. Yeah. How frequently do we make assumptions and opinions yeah. in our everyday life? Mm -hmm. More than that, how many times how many times we take others' opinions? It's a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. You know. Oh, especially when you when you like when you arrest somebody, then all of a sudden, let's say one, you know, be it, oh, they're talking about somebody, right? And all of a sudden, you jump in there, you know, you jump in there and, and put your own opinion in it. And then that's it. You're you're lost. Well, I think even it's so frequent that, uh, and I don't think so much, I don't do this anymore, but I know for many, many years, it's the stories that we made up because somebody didn't call us or somebody didn't text it us. It must be something that I did that uh, I upset them or uh, they're mm -hmm. mad at me or things like that because yes. you know you couldn't fathom why if you texted them they didn't text you back immediately. <laughs> Maybe they're busy and but instead of just letting it go, we would make up a story around it. Yeah, um, and believe that story. Mm -hmm. um, and and even when they told us what happened, we wouldn't believe them. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And and so much we make so many assumptions. Um, assume that, you know, I, I think Linda's favorite one. Uh, I didn't reach out because I didn't want to disturb you because I know you're busy. That's oh, right. man. oh yes. You yes. kick her with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh who's to say that she wouldn't make the time for us anyway? Is it a, just a convenient excuse because we didn't want to reach out? Or yeah. we're not feeling worthy enough that she would actually want to make the time to talk to us. So there's so many different permutations of that. Um mm -hmm that we've all done in one shape or form. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, mm. even too, sometimes when say we trigger somebody and they have a comment or a judgment of us or someone and like, oh, you're crazy or you're a psycho or you're psychotic. and you know, you sit there and you just kind of, you really will play that in your head. Am I really that? Am I really this way? Am I, you know, sometimes depending who it comes from, you can kind of be like, oh, they were just, you know, upset that day. And sometimes you'll take it as you sit there and you contemplate it and you believe it. Is it something that, am I really sad all the time? Am I really an inconvenience? Am I really crazy? And you'll believe what they say. Mm -hmm. yeah well you know where it says how we value others um is based on opinions and assumptions and it's it's so true like we we frequently assume we know someone just from what people have said said to us rather than you know connecting from the heart and actually just having that interaction and communication with people and and um allowing them to express themselves we just automatically make an assumption um, based on what other people have told us about them. And, and um, yeah. Well, and that's how we live. No, and that's how we live, right? You know, uh, the one that really gets me is um, when they say, oh, do you remember when, you know, the story from a long time ago occurred, right? You know, and they, and they bring it up. Now, that is obviously that's the past right 
And that's based on assumption too, because they weren't there. When they, uh, um, it reminds me, John Paul, uh, what you just said, when I was talking with my mom. And uh, I don't know, I don't know how we end up with this conversation, right? But she said, oh, and that guy, I hate him because the way he looked to your dad or the way he spoke to your dad back then, something like that, something oh, out of the blue. Right? And I look at her and I say, what? Yeah. I mean, I will never, will never forgive that man because the way he spoke to your dad during that meeting, blah, blah, blah. And as a mom, that happened 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe the dude is already gone and you still, still carry on that burden mm-hmm. in yourself. Oh. I like that. And my, my mom didn't see it from that angle. My mom thought that it was a very noble thing to do to carry on that burden. Mm, wow. Love to her husband. Protecting him, per se. So, uh, so, I mean, it just kind of strikes me, you know? And that's what we do. We, we carry on, I mean, burdens after burdens after burdens through our entire life, you know, without realizing the, that, the damage that is we're doing to ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, you're mute, Lisa, by the way. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. And I'm reading some of the comments about uh, people doing uh, candle work and doing mm-hmm. other things to really work through some of the, um, some of the old stories that they're contending with. Mm-hmm. And I, I, fo- I found that uh, over the last week, there's a lot of things that I, you know, hadn't really even thought about uh, were coming up and, and really had to intentionally use my will to overwrite my mind mm-hmm. and say that out loud, that mm-hmm. I use my will to overwrite my mind. This yeah. is a story. This is not real. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm not going to enter- entertain it, but, and I find that, you know, I don't care if people think I'm crazy. Um, oftentimes I'll walk around with headphones in anyway, so people think I'm having a phone conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, then no one even looks at you th- twice. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's exactly what you say, Lisa, is, is what we are conditioning to. Yeah. You know, because in reality, it doesn't matter who's there, but we have to camouflage ourselves to feel safe. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% right. You know? Well, we've been molded by the expectations of our parents and our society yeah. and schools. And and so, you know, we, we, we're born being this be- beautiful, pure little thing of life that's, Ooh. you know, just so perfect. Yeah. And then we get... We have all these imprints from our parents and our uh, and that creates our foundation, which is like be a certain way, act a certain way, you know, talk a certain way or don't say a certain thing. And we end up we end up becoming our parents ultimately. And <laughs> yeah. we end up becoming unhappy because because one, we don't know ourselves. We're we're trying yeah. to appease our parents, always having um, living to an expectation that they've put upon us, not even realizing as we get older that we're still trying to live up to that expectation mm-hmm. until we finally start to become self-aware and realize that, hey, I'm actually living at my parents' nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> but then it right. becomes ours. It becomes ours because we've adopted it and yeah. we haven't we haven't consciously gone, no, this doesn't serve me anymore. Mm-hmm. So hence why we actually are living a lie, because yeah. who are we? We're a product of all these expectations, beliefs, assumptions, opinions of everyone else that we've adopted and made true. Mm-hmm. And so 
And so as we go through this process, and even with these energies that are coming up, it's it's really bringing up all this, all this it's density. Bringing the bust. Yeah, it, it's bringing it up, and and bringing we have to bust. choose whether we're going to allow that past to dictate who we are in this present. Moment. Right. You know, that's that's a good point too. And you know, we have to choose where. Okay, you know, uh, should I make it worse by projecting? You know, should I just you know throw you know add flame to the fire per se? And you uh, you touched up on another one too, and this kind of hurt me too. Was for me, you know, I was taught do not rock the boat. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's you know, and that's the family too. You know, that's that you know, that distorted family that we have within ourselves, that, you know, that I'm see, speaking about. And yeah, and, and you know, if you just observe yourself, for me, you know, for me as well, as, as I don't like rocking the boat, you know, I, you know, I'm at this situations where, you know, should I, should I say something, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, how am I going to, you know, uh, how am I going to do this, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, or should I, you know, entertain, you know, entertain those those opinions? You know, it's it's really hard. It is, and at the same time, uh, it's not. They're not worth it. You know, they are not. But it's very but, serious, though. Serious energies that are coming here. Yeah, but you know, you know what it makes it so hard, because as long as we um, consciously or subconsciously. As long as we we are influenced by others' opinion, mm -hmm. this is going to be constantly happening. Yes, you know, uh, because we want to fit in. That's right. That's that's the main need, human right. need. You know, that's been our conditioning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. a, a fitting thing. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. It made me think of how many times I really didn't know who I was for a long time personality wise, because I would change my personality depending on who I was with, mm -hmm. you know, depending yeah. on what mm -hmm. they expected me to behave like or how I was expected to, to behave. So sometimes it was prim and proper where I'm not prim and proper at all. I like to be mm -hmm. outgoing and silly and loud, but to have to close that in when you're around certain people at least that was what I thought did they really want me to I don't know I yeah. just thought that's how I had to be around them um so and and you know when your parents are like you know you have to behave here we're at your grandparents you have to behave and you have to sit like this and you have to eat like this and no elbows on the table and so you're trying mm -hmm. to remember all these things to be prim and proper so you don't let anybody down but yet really, I just want to use my fingers and eat because you know what, <laughs> that would, you know, I'm just an example. That's just who I am. Um, but yeah, you kind of conform depending on who you're hanging around with of what their, you think their expectation is of you to how to behave. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you say that one about eating with the fingers, it reminds me when, when you are dating and you go to buy, to, to eat a Kentucky fried chicken, you use the fork and the knife, you know, yeah. I know, since then Gage is down, then Gage is down, oh man, you're like a, like a caveman, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you true you shows up, you know? Anyway, um, yeah. I gotta go, I'm falling asleep, and if I keep longer, love you. Conversation, mm, I love you. And I'm going to keep myself on the floor, and I want to do that. Okay. Love you guys. Love you, love you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To hear it ask, can we command the templates to be released? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It starts with first the awareness that mm -hmm. you're running a template and, yes. and then watching to make sure you're not actually continuing the template and then commanding, using your own will to overwrite yeah. the template. Yeah. Um, absolutely, you can command. Um, and you know, another way to look at it too is like, okay, so you're going through something, right? You can just in in a, in that moment that you're going through something, just if you can just observe what you're going through, what your thoughts are create generating, whether you're feeling resistance, whether you're feeling anger, whether you're feeling blame, that's all part of that template. Mm -hmm. And so when you can go, oh my god, I'm actually doing this. What else am I doing? Okay, I'm really just wanting to project right now. Okay. That's another thing that that template does. 
So you're really getting to know that template because you're actually witnessing it playing out right then and there. And so as you're witnessing it playing right there, you can then you can then kind of like just take that observer position and say, okay, I know I'm actually consciousness and I'm and my physical avatar is just currently playing a program right now. And in, in being able to recognize all these different attributes, even when you're really, really pissed off and go, wow, I'm really feeling pissed off right now. Okay, that's part of that. That's an attribute of that. And and then if you can feel like you're still hanging in there and you're still, that's part of it too. It's It wants to hold you there. Mm-hmm. But that's, again, where you use your will and say, okay, I recognize you. Okay, I got it. And then you can choose to go, this no longer serves me. And then you can, and in you stepping back and just seeing it from that observer perspective, it helps you to just take take that personalization away from it and just go, I know this, I know that I am consciousness and this is just the program of the vessel. And it's okay that it's running this program right now, but I can also choose to now let that program go, you know, because <clears throat> We have so many programs. We've spent like count, countless lives, and they did yeah. service at some stage, but right now they don't anymore. So, you know, it's no point in beating yourselves up about it. Even when you're feeling really shitty and you're feeling in your in the depths of it, that's part of it. And you go, oh wow, okay, what, what am I currently doing right now? Okay, I'm feeling like this. Write it down. Get it out on paper. No, Write it down. You know, at, at that point, when we're in the depths of that, we have an option. We have a choice. We either play victim to it or we rise ourselves above it, you know, and. And it, it, even yeah. playing the victim to it is, is part of it's it. It's part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you just can't stay there. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I know for myself, I, I stayed in that victim mentality for a while. Yeah. And we all have, you know, mm-hmm. had our mm-hmm. <laughs> fill of it, you know, and, and so we've been able to help with one another and say, hey, you know. You're falling back into that again. You know, let's, you're not let's sure look you at can it. See yeah. it you're, you're feeling like you're doing this and you're doing this yeah. and it's okay. And but it's like, okay, but do you do you need to continue that? Mm-hmm. And it's 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 hard to it's hard when you're at the bottom of it and yeah. and and someone's showing it to you and it's hard for you to go, okay, let me just pull myself out here mm-hmm. and just observe my from what I'm doing. Because you know, one thing is connections. Um you know, because one thing that I realize is that um, is that because Linda's the macro and we're the micro, she's able to, um, she knows everything that we're feeling, everything that we're going through, everything that the, you know, um, guy is going through. And so when when she points something out to us, it's because she wants to highlight an aspect or a program yeah. that's that she's recognized within us, but we are not able to recognize within us. Mm-hmm. And so when... So when someone else shows you that, that you have a program, you're really ultimately, we're all, we're all just neutralizing it for the collective in our own way. So that's important to remember Mm -hmm. that we, that we're neutralizing it for everybody. It's not just within ourselves. It's, it's for the whole. And, you know, I know when I remind myself of that, it's like, it makes it easier is not the right word, but I can't think of what I want to say, but it does make it easier to be able to get yourself out of it because you, you realize and you recognize that you have a much bigger mission for the whole versus just in Mm -hmm. here. I mean, it does start in here, but those ripples, yes, they carry forth. And, and um, so we have to be conscious of what ripples we are putting out there. And I think it's important that everybody learn, like can eventually get their hands on some tools because for how long were we told like if if victim mode you rather you stayed in victim mode because something happened to you but then if you stayed in victim mode you it's like well take a pill for that take a pill to get out of that you know you you were reliant on like an antidepressant or anxiety med or something right Mm -hmm. because you were always told to suppress so much so then you would suppress it you were never you know, it was always something done to you instead of, you know, learning how learning tools. And I mean, I even watch it in my 20 year old and like the, the stubbornness of his mind right now. It's like, I really wish that, and I know it has a lot to do with the age, but 
It's like you staying where you are is digging your hole deeper into the victimization that you're trying to get pity and unfortunately like yeah. manipulating everything on the outside of you but yet you will do absolutely nothing to help yourself like mm -hmm. nothing and it's like i really wish i would have known so i could have helped tools when he was more receptive receptive of that like i can with my younger two but with mm -hmm. him it, it, it's now to the point where it's in his court like he's gonna have to want yeah. to or eventually he'll get to the age where he'll i mean again it's his own experience and and he'll have something at the end of it but it's so hard to watch that that aspect succumb to that victim mode and want nothing from nobody and want to stay yeah. there and suppress it with a medication because you think that's going to bring you out but yet it's not and you know it's not but you won't change right. it yeah it's just you can really see it when it's your children and you feel the pain that they feel mm -hmm. um for me and and for my son it's really about caring so much what other people think and mm -hmm. trying to help him understand that they, first of all, they may not even be aware. And if they are, it might've been five seconds because people mm -hmm. are focused on themselves. They don't really care. It's mm -hmm. your own um, worry and uh, in, impression of it. And, uh, and it, to me, it was just um, really putting things front and center, how much we cared about what other people thought about us. Yes. Yeah. It's actually quite frightening. Very. That, one of the things that we've learned is a lot of what people speak is actually more of a reflection of themselves and has nothing to do with us personally. But yet, you know, again, another tool, yes, it's still something for you to look at, but majority of it has to do with a reflection of themselves and the words that they're saying. So again, another tool and another one of those hard things to... Um, understand like even when we were talking about expectation it brought me to something this weekend and i'm like communication is the biggest thing for expectation and yes. i had a friend that well a, an acquaintance of mine i was doing actually his sister-in-law's hair this weekend and he's a very outgoing um chef uh very country fun guy right and he's finally for for the first time ever in his life, he's getting married and he's getting married in the middle of a field. Um, and he never put it on the invitation, but on one of the hottest days of the year and in a field, he wants everybody to dress to the nines. He wants everybody in suits and ball gowns and, but never put it on the invitation. So I was looking at his sister-in-law and I'm like, you do realize they're his friends. So they're probably thinking they could probably wear tank tops and shorts for one with their sandals. So there's, so you can't have an expectation if you don't communicate at all. Like how is that you, especially when you want something so drastic of this fancy, very formal attire in the middle of a field, but you don't tell anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're set yourself up for a complete mm -hmm. utter disappointment on your wedding day because you never oh, expect it to anyone at all and that's not what you've ever expressed your personality to be like ever so mm -hmm. communication to me is very important if you want to have an expectation oh yeah mm -hmm. well expectations insulated disappointments oh, don't they because don't they ever <laughs> <coughs> well and not just that but it also leads to judgment oh yes i'm very good at that one uh well, mm. been anyway um <laughs> and like you know but we've but you know we've been brought up to have you know like you have some parents who say oh we have such high expectations the way we live our lives and stuff like that and and really it's just really projecting their own judgment of uh, onto upon others and 
and so you, you you're you're constantly judging yourself and judging others and I know like for me um there was always like with me doing sports and stuff like that there was always an expectation of being successful in in that and then and then when you're a sports or an athlete you tend to take that expectation of being good at everything you do and so and then you have this perfectionist template that just you know it just builds and builds and builds momentum and then you realize that you get to a point where like nothing makes you happy there's no there's never any anything that that fulfills you and you're always chasing that next little buzz and and it, it just keeps you in a loop and then of course because your expectations are up here everyone else is everyone else has to meet that expectation and of course that, that comes to the disappointment of 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 letting things down or letting people down or people letting you down because you're 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 then projecting that expectation on everyone else yeah. and it's it's just a vicious vicious loop that causes so much suffering because there's it's it's a never-ending um you know rabbit hole that you have to go down and you keep trying to um you know uh, appease yourself and everyone else around you you know yes so you know so one can say like in the beginning you know we had this uh ideations of connecting Okay, you know, but we're using our the templates of our wounding, which we did not know about. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we wanted to connect to something to be somebody, another template, right? To achieve something, another template. Mm -hmm. Um, But in all of this, though, you know, we want to connect to each other. And that's all to have this heart heart connection. That's the goal. Yeah. That's that's the goal. Um, mm-hmm. a, f- a few days ago, I had a had a vision, and I was with my my children. There's all um, there's five of them. They're always they're sitting by this table, and uh, there's a radio on the table. It's real loud, you know, playing some music, real loud. And I arrived there. Spirit was showing me. I arrived there. My son was there, and then what he said was, I remember this clearly too. What he said was. Was um, you know, I I told him, okay, turn down the music, you know, I want to speak, and and he was really upset, you know, physically upset, full talk about feelings, emotions, oh, yeah. but you know, I told him, I says, you know, son, all I want, all I want for you is to is for you to be alive, and you know, and I said, you know, I'm sorry that I did not know that, you know. And then I had us all this emotional feeling, and you know, and then then he 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 acknowledged it. You know, it was it was really, and he, you know he, he we hugged and it was it was really good though. But you know, that shift that we speak about, you know, when we have our you know conversations with our family, you know, that's what we're looking for, Definitely. right? That that connecting. You know, and of course, these tools do help us. They really, really do. Mm. How's the how's the chatting uh, going on in the live chat? Yeah. Who's that? Who's that? Who are you looking at? Vicky wants to share something. Vicky. <laughs> there she is. Yes, please. Um. So talking about expectations is um something that happened to me that i'm just not really realizing and seeing it clearly Mm -hmm. is um i moved to the ranch a couple months ago but i brought with me um a bunch of old parts of myself my old self and also um uh california and and i i brought it here and thought that i I, I didn't know it well. I don't know if I knowingly did it or not. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel like I knowingly did it. And uh, so trying to live in both worlds here at the ranch, but in the old at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that won't, that won't work. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now I'm actually struggling a bit um, to let go of the old so that I can be fully here. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing about the expectations. Yeah. Okay, she asked me to share. 
I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, because it's right now. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 not. Have you I, noticed though? Um, if if I will, uh, have you noticed though? It, it is based on um, a lot of it is on based on the visual stuff. Yes, it is. Yes, attachment to to things, absolutely visual things. Yep. Yep. Yeah, uh, beaten past. Yeah, I'm not sure if I see that part visual. Uh, he's like talking about. Can you can you expand on that for us, John Paul? Hmm. Well, it's based on memory, right? You know, so, yeah. like like as you were speaking about the two worlds, right? You know, the other world, that's all visual. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, yeah, because Vicky was was explaining that she, you know, she's she's um she's dealing with uh you know these two worlds that we all deal with right you know however they play out we still got to deal with them i think that um what happens as well is that unconsciously we bring uh we bring these things with us thinking that we can incorporate it into mm -hmm. into the new mm -hmm. and because because you, that's what you that's what you've done mm -hmm. you know and ultimately <laughs> ultimately it's your old self yeah, it's all your old self. It's not California. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's your old self, your old life. Because so. yeah. there's comfort, there was comfort in it, and even as and... screwed up as it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes, comfort. Yeah, they're definitely comfort. Yeah. And, and and unconsciously, the mind seeks that. So it's it's like, and that's another program in itself. It's like we seek the comfort in in especially when you're moving to something new. Your mind. Um, your mind seeks to give you give it comfort to um to make you feel more secure in some way mm -hmm. you know because when you when everything's new especially if you've been living on your own mm -hmm. um there's a whole heap of change and and so that expectation we have to recognize that we often have these expectations but they're unconsciously playing out and they end up generating a whole heap of programs of 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 seeking for that comfort but you can never you can never gain it gain it because it's no longer there. It's completely a new. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and sometimes the human struggles to let go of that past. I like how, what Emil said. He said visual as in remembrance of the past. Mm -hmm. That's mm, that's yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that, that gets you all the time. Yeah. Until we deal with it, of course. True. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, how's everybody <laughs> feeling today? Well, uh, <laughs> shitty. <laughs> like being Ringa, right? Ringa. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Well, uh, let's just say um, it's good. <laughs> Hello, Liz. Hey guys. Hey guys. Oh. I yeah, I was feeling shitty and I, I just woke up. So <laughs> we were just asking how everybody was feeling. So perfect timing. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't hold my own. I, I had to lay down and I researched. And I was listening there for a little bit and I was gonna say too that that moving it to me it's the familiar familiarity too. We we get so used to our familiarity in one place and then you go somewhere else and combine it and it's it's not an easy um thing that happened to me when I moved to Tennessee from Illinois so mm -hmm. I'm it's nice that you shared that because I'm yeah. hoping I'm not going to experience it again when I come to the ranch myself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's odd. Well, just be aware though, Leslie, that you, it could, so you don't miss yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I did. I'm like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> 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 maybe uh, that's a word you need to go out and yell right at the pond i think right? so. 
jump in the pool and scream it out. <laughs> yeah, no one can hear me in the water. Um, so it's, he says that um, Ta, Tarith says, huge comfort. I love the familiar fear of the unknown is real. It is, I mean, you know, the thing about being becoming comfortable is that it keeps us stagnant. And yeah. um and there's there's actually there's actually a lot of um spontaneity in um in not having that comfort. And for the human, I know that when I first moved to the ranch and moved in with Linda, there was a lot of discomfort because I was constantly seeking in every moment some element of comfort, whether it was the way I worked on my computer, whether it was the way I make my coffee. It, I was my mind was constantly seeking for something that reminded me of the comfort. And and so long as you um get stuck there, um you'll you'll just keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper in that because you know I mean how many times in your life have you gone and or in or in this week, gone and changed your coffee and made it different. You won't because you seek that comfort. And so you have to become aware of that and change it and 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 constantly change it and, and consciously change it so that so that when you do have things that that come up in your life, you're actually more able to to you're able to navigate the the flows and ebbs and flows of life a lot more because you're already you're already letting yourself become more comfortable with the unknown you know mm -hmm. so i was thinking that too when you were talking about it, um how people used to not want to redecorate their house it was yeah. always set the same way and they'd be like oh i can't decorate this any other way and um mm -hmm. so yeah that's a big thing too even just changing your house even if you got to take the baby steps changing things in your house to get things moving for yourself yeah and it shifts the energy too when you do yes. that yes yes mm -hmm. it's almost like you get a new perspective on something mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's cool. oh sorry that's my hand <laughs> you're really cool. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you because you know for me like in this process of moving like i had to stage my house and so when I staged it, I was like, wow, this looks mm -hmm. really, it's just clean. I'm like, all that stuff I had out. Because when I moved here, it was like everything that I, I didn't have in my other place. It was like, I just put paintings all over the wall. I just let everything out. And I was like, wow, it just looked terrible. I, the, mm -hmm. When I changed everything, it was like, I really like this. But I also, too, I just, I unattached to all that other stuff I had. So mm -hmm. even now, just packing, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't need any of this stuff. Who knows when I'm going to see it? And who cares? It's just stuff. And we get so attached to stuff. Yeah. yeah. Stuff. Yes. Like yeah. Watching when I, when I had to help my mom stage her house, um, she had been there since 1996 in that house and the stuff that she um, held on to, like even just to like get out to declutter it, stuff that to me was like, why are you keeping that? This, this doesn't mean anything. This is like, why are you, it's rotted and broken and falling apart or this is a <coughs> god awful piece of glass. Again, that's my own opinion. But I was sitting there looking I'm like, how are you so like, I can't pack your whole entire house for you to take to the new one because there's just no room for it. And I remember, and, and it wasn't right on mine and Shelly's part, but a couple of times we looked at some things and we're like, cause it was a rug and it was a rug that my cat or her cat had like ripped up and it was full of cat hair, but she wanted it to take to the new house to put in front of the door and Shelly and I not fair to her but we looked at each other and we're like we need to make the executive decision here we need to throw these away and we'll buy her new ones right it wasn't our place to do that but again we were sitting there and we're like how can you hold on to that from this to your new and just the clutter and then when the house was empty you know she was sitting there and I'm like doesn't that feel better 
I know you know your stuff is safe in a bin right now, but doesn't this feel better? And and now the biggest thing will be now that all those things are in boxes in the basement, if they never come up and they never get unpacked, then why do you even need it to begin with? It, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Attachment to stuff, you, you don't need it. So it, it's it's incredible to look at the attachment that someone has to some things. Even things from like when I like books that I made when I was in kindergarten, fantastic to look at and go down memory lane. But then I kind of sat there and I'm like, am I a bad mom that I never kept my kid, my kids kindergarten stuff? Because I loved it in the moment and I kept it while they were in kindergarten, but I I let go of it after a couple of years of having it. I didn't want that clutter so to look at both sides of the keeping forever and then getting rid of it after a couple of years it's like you know it's it's pretty incredible to see the attachment to stuff Mm. Mm. christy i i can relate helping my mom get rid of her florida house which was actually my grandparents house And so, you know, and it still had a lot of the same furniture in it. And she was attached to so many things because it was her mother's and it was her mother's happy place and everything else. It's like, oh, um, we just sold it a few weeks ago. So uh, it, it, it was hard, but I was proud of her because she worked through it and she understood, you know, we didn't force her. She made the decision. We just helped make it happen. But going back to something, uh, Elvira, that you were saying, and it struck me uh, about, you know, forcing yourself, not forcing, but wanting to change things up um, and, and create a more flexible, I'll call it variable life. And the reason why I use the word variable is because the inner balance, the monitors that we use, it actually mm-hmm. measures the heart rate variability. And the more variability your heart has, the healthier you are, the younger you are. So think about it. As you age, you tend to do things all the same way. And there's not a lot of variability. And uh, so your ability to deal with things that come your way, et cetera, decreases. And so the more variability that you have in your heart, the... um, the better, the better you are, a better off you are as far as longevity, uh, ability to deal with things as they happen, but also the ability to make decisions. Um, it also affects your health, um, ability to, to, to super learn. It's amazing when you do some of the research on it. Yeah. Yet, you know, we all are creatures often, uh, are creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. because we find comfort in it or it's robotic and we don't have to think and that's and that's that's where most of the patterns are they're all robotic Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're they're so unconscious breathing yeah and that's that's the hard part of us catching it and that's why you know you want to get to see no matter how shitty you feel even just observing that feeling and, and watching what your body wants to do and how it wants to play out. Cause it's been doing that for a long, long time. And it's been, right. it's gained a lot of, it's gained the attention it needed. Right. You know, gained, yeah. gained all, those, all those attributes, but it no longer, but it keeps you trapped though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I like what Emil said. Usually our <laughs> knees tell us how flexible we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had knees knee problems from grade six on <laughs> really I'm telling you, oh yeah oh yeah but i'm telling you this week they were amazing obviously i was being flexible because i had zero pain <laughs> well and think of like how early even robotic sets in by the age of four we're yeah. going to school in a routine, doing the same thing every day, same time, getting up, having your breakfast, brushing your teeth, getting dressed, going to school, done school at the same time. You come home, you eat supper, you got to go to bed. By the age of four, that robotic is going until mm-hmm. you're 
what done school, which high school is what, 17, 18 years old. And then you're off to college, which is still kind of the same program, but the schedule yeah. might be a little different. Mm -hmm. So, I yeah. mean, not only do you have like a program of your personality kicked in by the age of four, and then from four on, it's the robotic society and your, your family kicking in. So that's a lot of robotic programming to try and, you know, change. I, I, this popped up on my Facebook. I don't know who posted it the other day. Pictures of classroom prison cafeteria prison cafeteria it's actually quite, quite frightening when, when you look at the comparison yeah mm -hmm. yeah i have uh, signed kendall up so we're going to uh, texas september 10th and we'll be there for three weeks 21 no yeah three weeks september and so when, pardon september 10th you're coming down yeah, September 10th to October 2nd. Oh, um, so when we come back here in October, I've signed her up for nature school. So she's actually going to be outside in the woods, learning um, the ecosystem, how things work, climbing trees. It was funny. They even say, oh, if, she has, if they have to pee outside, don't worry. We know how it works. We'll teach them how to do this. So it's biodegradable or kind of thing. So I'm like, well, she knows how to pee outside. So this will be fantastic. But... <laughs> Just how, and, and it doesn't matter if it's rain, shine, snow, not, um, she'll be outside in nature learning everything that outside is going to be able to teach her. And I thought, how amazing yeah. is that? It is. Have an hour's worth of tutoring once a week for the, you know, the math and the reading, because she still has to have that. But then yeah. two other days a week for the three hours a day, she'll have like hands-on outdoor experience. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's fabulous. I'm that so a excited. program that. like that is even offered. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought I that would... uh, Oh, sorry, JP. I wanted to say something. Um uh Emil says uh we we given too much of our power away. And you know that's another uh angle of it too. Because, you know, we give the power away to, you know, this, right? And this is about, this is how, this is how we do it. You know, it's not like, you know, it's, it's not uh, a different type of power per se, right? We, we, we give it away unconsciously and consciously too, right? We, we choose, we choose it, you know, you know, even though, you know, that little voice is in our heads, well, I didn't really mean that. No, no, you, you totally did. Don't forget, everything is a lie about you, right? You know, going back to where we started here, everything is a, is a lie. Um, and at the same time, you know, when you're connected to somebody, yeah, you can sit there and uh, and talk, you know, connect. You can sit there and, oh, watch a movie, you know, enjoy a meal. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. But, you know, that's that's a very important part of it all. Uh, is to really recognizing where you give your power away, you know, to, and, and accepting it all too, you know, uh, that's, you know, that's where that, you know, that pause moment comes in and mm -hmm. that, that big deep breath helps a lot. It sure does, especially now with all these energies flowing through, um, you can very easily get caught up in your mind about it. So, Oh shit! It's like, oh, it's so it's so prominent. You know, mm -hmm. it's like it's like you're in a it's like you're in a music video, but you don't really know that you're in it. The music sounds pretty cool, mm -hmm. close, but you're in it. You're dreaming, you're dreaming, but you're still awake. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Nailed there it. You're talking about music. There's a song I was listening to this morning, and it I, I should share with you guys. It goes, "You're you're you're dreaming, but you're awake. You're awake." It's it, it. I had to wrap my mind around that because really, I mean, are we in a dream? This is an illusion. Mm -hmm. Everything's an illusion, and yeah, it's an illusion. 
It's yeah. but it's at the same time, we, we are we are in mother's dream. Yeah. Dreaming while we're awake. Yes. yes. But we're kind so, so knowing that everything that we've been everything that we've been shaped that has shaped our life has been a lie. It's um it's really important to now start to look at our belief systems and all our beliefs are really um they're all they're all created from woundings. And they usually have a polarity as well. And so it's really important for us to, you know, look at all the different ways that we have created beliefs in our lives and, and how um, how we, we live by them or not or tend to impose them on others. Um, and so it's really important that we look at uh, all the ways that we have beliefs in whether it's in our relationships, whether it's, in the foods that we eat, whether it's in our thoughts, um, thoughts about ourselves as well. Um, so it's 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 really imperative that we start to you know do a list or take take um, take a note of of potentially all your beliefs around different topics, different areas of your life, mm -hmm. um, family <clears throat> values, all of those sort of things, so you can start to bring awareness um to all the patterns and unconscious thoughts and um that may be playing out mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm just uh, i'm just looking at the a lot of good comments and yeah. chat <laughs> really good ones hey, you were talking about those uh changing patterns or our beliefs and stuff i uh, a couple weeks ago i was really in this space and I just whipped out a piece of paper. I think it was Lisa. I was uh, telling me about this, but I, I wrote down a bunch of old programs I was running. And I just oh, nice. wrote down the, to release old. And I wrote down all the things I wanted to release the programs that I'm running. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I wrote, another I wrote I did a column then I wrote another column of new programs that I want to install well that so, kind of emptied that worked that emptied you in a, in a sense clearly yeah. it, it, it 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 really it really helped me out a lot because it clearing out and canceling and clearing out and deleting all those programs and then bringing in the new ones it really because now I'm just going by those new programs because I didn't, you know, I didn't think I was worthy or uh, a lot of things I didn't think about myself. So I put those new programs in and now I'm just telling myself those new programs. And it seems like those old programs, I'm, I'm, they haven't even come up. You know, I just feel total shift phys on all levels, I feel. Even just my health, I feel better. So, you know, if we could cancel... We know what those old programs are, and we could just get rid of them and replace them. I think that alone is just powerful, a powerful tool for ourselves. So thank you, Lisa. Because You're welcome. You, you, <laughs> it's, yeah. Maybe we replace the word program with maybe beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> beliefs. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. It's like, what do we want to create? And what do we want to fall apart, you know, to fall away, to no longer be part of the, uh, of mm -hmm. our patterns, beliefs, mm -hmm. the old things. Yes, definitely. were programs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Templates. Yeah. Uh, uh, so she said, um, Lisa, what do you mean you were running programs, please? And thank you. And and I think Lisa just clarified that programs. I mean, my beliefs, beliefs yeah. about myself, you know that that I'm helpless, uh, yeah. I'm unworthy. So things like that, the beliefs I have about myself, I call them my own programs. Okay, mm -hmm. but those are my own beliefs. So just putting in new beliefs about myself, because that's the only way. 
I feel for me, if I can't empower myself to think better about myself, yeah. no one else can do that. Only mm-hmm. I can. Only yep. you can. And, and, and if we, and if I want to evolve, if all of us want to evolve, we have to find ways and methods to empower ourselves just to become that. Yeah. It's, it's, you know what? It's right here, right now. You yeah. know, if you feel it mm-hmm. right here, right now. It's beautiful. Totally. I was going to say something, but I totally forgot. <laughs> totally forgot. Yeah. Lily Marianne, I believe I am divine. You are. We all are. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Lily said, too, the repeat mistakes that go well away. You know, how many times we got to make the mistake and catch it before we could get rid of it. So, so in all of this, you know, we are, we are connecting to each other deeply, right? You know, and we can feel it. Okay. Yes. Nobody's around us at times. Yes. Or where was somebody, but we can feel it. Now, do we have any of those examples? Actually, I just want to share something else that just, just occurred to me um, is that, beliefs assumptions expectations they're all of the mind Mm -hmm. and Mm. they don't connect us to our hearts they are just simply a program that's been a survival mechanism for us and so in us connecting to our hearts we know that that's where all our wisdom and our inner knowing comes from and so in when we're abs- when we allow ourselves to be present in the in the now moment, that's where that's where all that wisdom will come from, and we won't need to. And that's where we we're able to catch the patterns and the programs and the beliefs that come up as well. Um. So, so you know that you know that when you've coming coming across a belief that it's a product of the mind, it's a product of a thought that's been generated which then can give you an indication that you're actually just thinking rather than coming from your heart space Mm -hmm. and so we have to kind of like learn to become more discerning of how much we attach to a belief as being true as opposed to coming to our heart and being present with the moment and and letting that that truth come forth Does that make sense? It does. Yes. It does. You know, I was I was thinking about you know how how the visual stuff is emotions too. How so? Well, um, well, uh, like you know, like somebody, like somebody is, uh, you know, destitute. Mm-hmm. right you know you know like that uh you know the, a photoshop um hurt animal per se right yeah um. hmm. that that's what i mean but uh, but you know and at the same time yes you know you, you get emotional you get emotional but then you can stop it you know within a second you know yes yeah. i am comparing I'm comparing that to the heart. Mm-hmm. You know, how if you're in the heart, you just let it go. Yeah. Release it, I mean. Like, yeah. I guess if you're in the heart and you take a deep breath now and you connect to your heart and in the now moment, you'll realize that it brings you into this space of being present. Whereas if you're in if you're in your mind, you'll always be retrieving a belief or a memory or a subconscious program or something and so so knowing that our whole life has become has been has been built on a lie it comes back to now okay well how do we on how do we now move forward and and live our true authentic life 
and that only that can only be done from coming from the heart space because as these energies come through stronger and stronger what we're seeing in the outside world is that people are getting very discombobulated yeah. they're getting stuck in their mind um their physical bodies are suffering a lot of aches and pains and um and you can really get really trippy and car get carried away but if you just connect it back to your heart and tuned in and one of the things i love about lisa that she always does and she reminds me to do is like she'll say but did you ask <laughs> yeah ask and so and that's i could probably say that to you guys too that that's as much like it's important to connect to the heart and to learn to connect to your innate rather than getting that information from the outside mm -hmm. um like you know you guys might even ask a question on um on the chat uh here and then but you know we would also encourage you like just to tune into your heart and ask that question for yourself because i would probably say that you already have the answer and so if we can learn to to tune into our heart and ask our own inner guidance to give us the clarity then we're going to start living a, a, an authentic life from our own from spirit guiding us from creator guiding us as opposed to from the mind which has been which has been our go-to for such a long time and that's how you build your your life anew because it's it's spirit based rather than mm -hmm. a memory based mm. You know, it's like Nick shows me that all the time. Like she does the muscle test, you oh, yeah. know, uh -huh. and um, so it, it helps remind me too. Check in with myself, you know. I'll, you know, Vicky, she's not necessarily even talking to anybody. I don't know exactly what's going on. We know, but I've seen her, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like. You know, it's like she's checking in and it's just a reminder for myself, like how often am I checking in? You know, she could just be checking in what top she should wear that day. I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it, and it doesn't matter. The point is, is she's checking in and mm -hmm. it just it's a good reminder for me. Check in, you know, is is this something, you know, that spirit wants for me, you know, or, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, however you check in, whether it's the muscle test or like, you know, at least did you ask <laughs> you know you know people around me that know what i'm doing they'll, they'll go what are you asking about <laughs> are you asking something about me oh, oh wow that's funny <laughs> um, see that's vain <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so tuning in and checking in is is, is really really very yes. very important Yes. And and that's one of the that's one of the places that we've um very readily given our power away because yeah, we've neglected the most. Yeah, because we we um we ask we ask someone else to provide that answer to us. Yeah. And it could yeah. be as simple as what food to eat or um or does this person need that? Um and you can just tune in and especially when you're living in that in a home environment. So thank you, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one. You're, You're off. off. Your mic's off. It make it has made life a lot simpler. Yeah. Um, it really has. Are because not only are you not wasting a lot of time trying to analyze and wonder, um, but mm -hmm. at, also at the same time you're you're connecting with spirit. So um and you're trusting and you're starting to trust. And when you start to trust, you can build on that. And yeah. then you know, when the bigger decisions come, it, it's easier because you've, you've got that relationship already built. Yeah. Yep. You've already built that foundation, mm. you know. Totally. Uh, Shushi uh, is asking a question. She said, I've been a Christian seer since 1989, began mm. med meditating 15 weeks ago. Finally feel I have broken through light floods, third eye, and I've uh, begun to <laughs> many different people what happens next I, I guess my question would be it's all relative to where are you on your journey because mm -hmm. it's it's a journey it's an evolution it's never ending 
it's really all about um, <laughs> consistently going into your heart, connecting with spirit. And also, you know, our job right now is to empty out our vessels. It's to all of the old stories, the old um, density, the uh, old karma, whatever you want to call it, feeling the feeling of whatever that is, and then releasing it. Um, because our that is that is our job right now. And then the other piece to this is living in the now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, Elvira, Nikki, Vicky, Vincent, um, yeah. John Paul, Christy, Leslie, any other thoughts? Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just it's add John Boy good. in and we'd be all set. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would like to say something to that. Uh, no, that's pretty good. Um, I wouldn't really uh, get too attached with these people <clears throat> because I, well, once again, they're visual. Um, you know, uh, I would just focus on the feelings, you know, whatever they brought up. Okay. Uh, who are these people? And see, don't forget too, you, you live in an inverted matrix and, and to really see the truth, you have to do one of these you know, many times. Um, but that's, no, that's, that's good. You know, that's good. Um, please, uh, you know, keep us uh, updated. We would yeah. love to look, you know, we would love to know more about that. You know? What's next, I would say that's a step to uh, you your in spirit. Yeah. And I think that's the beautiful part about it, just sitting in our fold mm -hmm. without needing to know any particular the way it's going to turn out right right if any of us, if any of us answered that that would be an expectation that we would put mm -hmm. out there yeah. and you would have an expectation mm -hmm. yeah it'll just unfold naturally absolutely mm -hmm. yeah just the feeling just being in the now just staying in that now because you, you, you get so lost in what's next mm-hmm so that's beautiful. I'm, I'm really, really happy for you that you're actually get, having these breakthroughs. It's wonderful. You know, I, I was, I, that's what I was going to say about, about all these energies. And yeah, it's very tough. But at the same time, the shifting, you know, Lisa, uh, Leslie spoke about the shifting part of it all where, okay, we're in this freaking crappy place. Okay. Uh, we're in our heads. And also next thing you know, you know, through working, you know, here with yourself, then all of a sudden you're shifted. You're like, you know, that, that, that occurred to me one time. I remember I was really in my head. I mean, a lot in my head. And I don't know what happened. I just shifted. And next thing I know, I was here, you know. And I, it's not like, you know, it's not like I'm going to say, oh, from there I was shifted from my heart all, all the way till now. No. You know, I mean, for that moment, you know, for that, for that crucial moment where I needed it the most. Mm -hmm. We're joined by this very little gorgeous thing here. Mr. Look who's that you got. Blondie. <laughs> Look who's at the camera. Who is that? Blondie. 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 So she smiles too. Oh my god, what a gorgeous dog! Nice. She's really calm. Yes, it's and so she's the only girl dog of the eight dogs. <laughs> what? <laughs> the only girl dog out oh of goodness. eight dogs. Yep. Oh, right. Okay. Right. <clears throat> she says, "Love me, Elvira. Just love me. I'm a girl." Oh, I know, Miss Blondie. Oh, I know. <laughs> a meal. All this radiation is making us become those 12 foot light beings. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I was feeling tall this morning. What else is happening on the chats? Yes, we're, we're definitely getting a lot of downloads. Absolutely. Our bodies are definitely going through a lot of upgrades. Mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. <laughs> I'll put her in between us, I guess. Go. Here, put your paw right there. There you go. Yeah, and a lot of messages too. A lot of you know, a lot of vivid messages as well. Yeah. 
deep breathing. Uh, I can't even tell you how much that helps. Yep. When I was like Absolutely. in so much discomfort, it was like all I could do just to lay there and just put my hand on my heart and just deep mm-hmm. breathe in and out. It was like, that was, that was about the most comfort I was getting out of that. It was because nothing, I couldn't play, sit, stand, none, none of that. Salt baths didn't help, yeah. but it's just like, just breathing and just connecting into spirit and just asking, you know, to raise my frequency above the discomfort, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's a good point. That's important to do, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, when it, it's, it's a simple thing, but we forget it, you know, that we, we can do that. We can ask, mm-hmm. be raised above that discomfort, mm-hmm. you know, hi, sweetie. <laughs> okay. You're all the way up on my oh. <laughs> the power. Yes. To command <laughs> <laughs> oh my your tongue does um, not come in my mouth <laughs> you know you know yesterday too i think a day or a day before i woke up and i was i was telling myself to breathe deeply yeah yeah and oh you know and the, and the comfort thing right i i felt comfort mm-hmm. i don't know why i did not i did not ask lisa you know just, why you know, because it's the breath I went back to bed again in us Absolutely. that's why you felt comfort mm-hmm. that's so true that's- yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Are you getting comfy? <laughs> she's like laying in here like a baby. <laughs> I'm telling you, she's beautiful. And yeah. her brother's down here on Elvira's lap, buddy. <laughs> oh. I never thought I'd like dogs as much as I do. I've not had pets around except the goldfish, and they're just so beautiful. There's eight dogs here. Eight dogs and five cats, one bird. <laughs> what about and the bird? We will be having more animals. Yep. Soon horses, and cows, and cows and horses and donkeys. Geese. We already have some geese. Yep. But we're getting more. Chickens. Chickens. We don't have any of those, but they're coming. And we're getting these most adorable donkeys. They're <laughs> so sweet. They're little babies. Oh, really? Aww. How tall are they? Okay. I just knew we were getting done because I didn't see the babies. Oh, yeah. oh, how cute. Yeah. They're adorable. Cute. So, yeah. Did you guys name them already? No. Smiles and chuckles. Is we it? can't, no, we can't go there. We've already been there, done that, and we lost them. Uh, <laughs> you can't name the same animal over and over and over again. The same <laughs> <laughs> Things yeah. not to do. At the ranch. They'll tell us their name when we get here. We'll just ask them, what's yeah. your name? And they'll tell us. There you go. That's it. And now you're showing us your face. There oh, you go. Oh, she's smiling. Pretty. Smile. She has a cute smile. <laughs> well, that's like it looks like a person. She does. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> hey, Blondie. So, Bobby Evans writes, so if we are robots and can't really experience feeling, the only true feelings we can have are from Holy Spirit. Mm, that has a lot of, I want to say this right away, uh, that has a lot of... Um, so uh, when, we're we... in our minds, when we're in our minds, it's it, yes, it's robotic. Uh, however, we have the Christ life within us. And so it is our. It is important for us to use our will and and that light within us to grow that light within us, so that we we are not robotic. But however, when we're not in our hearts, then we allow the AI to take over. And um, so, what else did you say? So if we are <laughs> the only true feelings we have are from our from spirit. So I just want to, I was going to say too, sometimes you got to think of what do you mean by feelings? Because a lot of the times we think um, yeah. we're feeling when we're not. Like somebody might say, oh, I feel dumb. Do you feel dumb? What does dumb feel like? Um, or mm-hmm. I feel stupid or I feel 
Mm. Um, you, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, okay, but do you really feel that way? Or is your mind telling you you feel that way? But what does that actually feel like? So again, feeling mm. from the mind and feeling from, from the heart are completely different. Feeling from consciousness, feeling from spirit is completely different because spirit and heart isn't judgmental. But our mind, how do you feel dumb? Like, what does that feel like? What does... Well, um, I feel, I feel stuck. I feel, um, repetitive. Like what, what do those things feel like? Yeah. Well, for one thing too, if it's from your heart, it would never tell you that you're dumb. Absolutely. I was going to say that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Use the word negative, uh, shame, anything like that, unworthiness, dumb, stupid, it failure. did not come from your heart. No, I did not. No, no. Spirit never says that I'm dumb. Yeah, no. mm-hmm. Spirit never soul. says I'm a failure. Yeah. None of that. So, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Things. That's where it's from the mind, right? That that's yeah. the mind's program of teaching you yep. what that's supposed to feel like. But yet, there's no feeling to those technically those words at all. Yeah. They're they're yeah. programming to put you in victimization mode and keep you in victim mode so that you mm-hmm. cry. Yeah. And yet one yeah. of the biggest things that I've learned is you could sit there and be bawling your face up, but if somebody says something and it totally turns those off, yes. you're crying from a robotic state and not yeah. from a feeling at all. Exactly. AI tears. You're making you're making emotions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fake emotions. Mm-hmm. Audit yeah. tears. Yeah. Mm. I wanted to mention too uh, is that okay when we do see these things, uh, clear concept delete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does help when when you can remember it. Yeah. I've tried to because of the whole, I, and I think it was Linda who had said it actually, but I try now not to say I feel silly. I try to say now my mind is trying to tell me that I'm silly. My, you know what I mean? I'm trying not oh, really? to use the words feel because it's yes. not a feeling. I don't feel that way, but my mind's trying to say yes. you're yes. being ridiculous about this instead of I feel ridiculous or I feel crazy. It's my mind is trying to tell me in this moment that da 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 mm-hmm. instead of putting the word feeling to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. It is. I like how you worded it. Because when we're when we start calling ourselves that, you know, we're stupid or we're dumb, aren't we demonizing ourselves? I mean, we're just you know, so just you know, spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are that divine spark, Mm -hmm. and so if we're calling ourselves stupid, dumb, you know all that stuff are we not saying that about spirit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean so and, and, oh, go ahead our words mm-hmm. yes and and that again and, you know, right? yes. mm-hmm. and i was gonna say and it's okay to to do something silly mm-hmm. but are you mm-hmm. nurturing that part of yourself and saying it's okay it's okay or are you again saying oh you're so dumb why would you do something so dumb like that there's a, there's a big, di- it's okay to nurture that little girl. That's part mm-hmm. in yourself. Mm-hmm. But like we said earlier, you don't stay in that, that pit right. and, and, and not be able to like, you can acknowledge how you feel and, and talk out loud to yourself and, you know, but to stay there and dig deeper in the sense of putting yourself down is not okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. still human having human experiences and still need to connect to spirit and show ourselves love because that's exactly what spirit and source would do yeah mm-hmm. yes and emil says in putting that out into the field and the process which isn't good you know Absolutely. so mm. yes uh actually um and with that just expanding on what um Emil said, you know, putting out um, that's not what that which is not good. Um, how often are we remembering to clear our energy fields, to call in that violet flame, 
mm. or the rainbow of fire, whichever one we choose to, or the, the 12 dragon council, you know, whatever we're calling in to help clear our fields, are we making a conscious effort several times a day? Or it, definitely before bed, are we making that conscious effort to clear mm -hmm. our energy fields? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's so important. I, I have gotten so much better on that because I, it was something that I didn't even think about, you know, doing. And then it just, it was like, I don't, talking with Linda and, and just conversations we've had around here and just recognizing the major, major importance of that, of clearing that energy. Otherwise you're just building on top of that energy, building on top of that energy. And it's just all ugly and distorted out here. And so it's very important to make sure that we are clearing our energy fields. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Peel, Peel and Reality Music says, um, love, the, love all the energies for what they are and for what they have given you while you are here. And absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just recently, it's been so, um, like the energies have been so intense and as and I've just started feeling feeling them through my body. And it's been really incredible just to to feel the difference of each one that's coming through. And I and I haven't had that experience like like I'm having it now. And and I'm just breathing through it and, and allowing it to flow through. And it feels really amazing. And yeah, you no matter what it feels like, you've just got to almost like love it and release it mm -hmm. and not really attached to it or in any way it is just energy it is yeah. right we're not this body you know we're not. No. nope we're what not is this body it? yep so Sh shashi asks what is a violet flame well violet oh. flame of transformation and transmutation yeah so we so we call we call the, the flame. You can call in the violet flame or the rainbow flame mm -hmm. um, from your heart, and it is um, it is an um, purification purification yeah. that you can ask for it to harmonize any discordant or misaligned energies in your energy field. So we know that everything that we think or um, come from the heart is it, it emanates energy so when we say bring in the violet flame it is a purification it is a form of purification for your energy field mm -hmm. yeah there are you could find uh on youtube there's um a lot of different violet flame mm -hmm. uh, so there's if, many I mean, different invocations for that yeah look i I mean, it, it can be really simple. Can. And if you bring in the um, rainbow flame, that has all the colors in it. So, yep. Plus more. <laughs> Plus more. Exactly. Golden rainbow. Yeah, the golden rainbow. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, too, when you do call this, you know, you can feel it, right? You can feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can. And if you do it when, you know, if you start to tune into how your body feels. You know, we get up in the morning and you do it in the morning and, you know, you do it, uh, let's say you do it on the hour, right? Or you might have uh, something that's happened and you might feel a little bit off or you might have had a disagreement. You know, as soon as you bring in the violet flame and you want it to rotate counterclockwise um, around you, you'll know that you start to notice a difference. And the more you, you do it regularly, you start to tune into the different feelings that you mm -hmm. get um so i i really like to I, i've been using it a lot and i i do definitely see the difference same here yep. not only that it helps our sisters and brothers around us oh because yeah because our energy is not all distorted and wonky and affecting yes. you know each other so it's really important to you know keep it clear and you know we've been really we've been we've been made very mindful of how it affects us because um, because in Linda's presence, our energy fields really affect her. Mm -hmm. And yes. so you know, with one another, we haven't, we haven't always known how it affects each other until, you know, a, um, a few minutes or even sometimes in a few hours, how we end up playing out on the same path that that person was going through. But with Linda, 
she's shown us how much it affects her because it, it instantly affects and so, and so we have to uh, and so it's really important that we become mindful of, of our own energy field and Absolutely. and that's not something that we've been taught to do but it is something that we need to and we encourage each other to to yeah. do constantly mm -hmm. yeah. you know and you saying that um uh, when i came to the ranch that was one thing i really really saw about myself i really saw my energy field and and how it affected out other people so i really had to work you know when i just came home i just really observed so much of myself and my whole being and my whole life i've been very like high strung hyper real nervous energy mm -hmm. and I look at it now, it's like, what's running that? What's the drive in me? It's my mind. Mm. It's the mind. So I'm just really working in that because <coughs> I have to get a handle on that and myself for everybody else, not just for me, but to be around others mm -hmm. and not cause discordance yes you know to for them and not only that is i want i don't want to create um because you know like like you're saying you know she can feel our energies and it's important as being a guardian to be really on cue and in tap with your own energy field and 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 knowing where you're at almost for me like checking in every moment because that mind is going every minute you got to be really yeah. on your stuff with yourself yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah D definitely clearing I have to clear out each day. I think before going to bed is just the perfect thing. Yes. You, you know, uh, you know that brings up another topic too, or I shouldn't say topic, but but with these energies as they're coming in, um, yeah, spirit will show you the how you infiltrated yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, it's either a black goo, or you know, the water is is dirty per se because you know water is, is consciousness mm -hmm. and uh, this is with uh, visions you know uh i guess you can say information coming in and they are occurring a lot more so don't get caught up in all this uh it's about uh feeling once again and releasing it from this body uh yeah. mm -hmm. yes so just be aware of it. Uh, yes. As uh, as as Linda says, we do all have inverted solar codes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything yes. else that you want to share with us? Uh, I feel pretty good, actually. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Anybody else? No. I was just thinking for a moment, I just sent it in the little chat there, but I'm like, we're all talking about this energies and stuff. And we've all of a sudden just got some big storm rolling out here with some thunder in. And I'm like, oh, here she comes this way, <laughs> physically yep. in the physical. But Clearing out the decks. Mm hmm I get some nice uh, thunderstorms here today, but they were, the sun was out too. So I always say Thor's out slamming his hammer around. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> fun. All right. Yeah. All right, my loves. Well, uh, we shall love you and leave you. And thank you so much for joining love you. us. Yeah. Love y'all. Sleep, have golden slumbers. Thank yeah. you so much. Same with you. Uh, for yeah. coffee tea and profundity on um, Monday, Monday morning. Monday morning. Monday.
Monday. Yeah, you're in Texas, lovely. It's Monday, Monday morning. <laughs> you and- Are we trying to calculate from over there? It's got to be hard having all those time changes. One minute it's Tuesday morning, technically for her, but Monday morning for us or Monday evening for you, Monday morning for us. I forget how that works, but I couldn't imagine having to go back and forth. <laughs> Being like, you know what? Yeah. When we went to England, it was like, I, I couldn't keep up with the, t- with the times. And then it's like back here now. And yeah, so it's all good. It's all good though. I'm getting. <laughs> well, at least at least you had some laughs with it. At least you know. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Love you all. Yes, See you Monday. You you. Have a good day. Uh, enjoy us. the storm. Thanks. A lot of blessings for you.